untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a fully dedicated 5 color domain ramp deck featuring the full set of Hurt Migration, a 7 mana sorcery, with a domain saying create a 3 3 green beast creature token for each basic land type among lands you control. Basic land types, of course, including plains, islands, swamp, mountain, and forest. And the important part all these tri lands from Streets of New Capenna have three different basic land types, so they're incredibly useful for getting to the full domain. And then we can also pay one on a green, a discard migration to search our library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into our hands, and to gain three life, which can also come in handy. Then more domain cards include a Slimefoot's Survey, a 5 mana ramp card that can essentially find two of our lands and put them on the battlefield tapped, including our trial lands. And then we get to take a look at the top X cards of our library, where X is the number of basic land types among lands we control, and then we can put one of those on top of our deck. So this can not only ramp, but also give us a ton of card selection to find our next powerful play. Then two copies of Jodas Codex, 5 mana to play and then 5 mana to tap and activate to draw a card, but it gets a 1 mana discount for each basic land type, so we can tap and then activate it for free basically with a full domain and turns into a powerful card draw engine. And artifacts are much more difficult for mono black and standards to answer, since mono black has answers to enchantments, but an artifact tends to stick around, so Codex proving to be an incredibly valuable card draw engine in this type of deck. Then we also have four copies of Drag to the Bottom as our Sweeper of Choice instead of Meat Hook Massacre, as we can cast this on turn four and already get rid of some large creatures like Shield Earth, whereas Meat Hook Massacre at that point would be for X equals two, which is nowhere near enough. And this gives each creature minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is one plus the number of basic line types, so it can be up to minus six minus six. Then we also have two copies of the Lenoir Green Widow, a 3 mana 4 3 spider with reach and trample, just as a nice early blocker to hold off any attacks. And then we can also get it back from our graveyard, once again for a 3 mana if we have the full domain, and then it will come into play tapped and gets exiled if it gets answered once again. And then we've got more early ramp with two copies of Celestus, which can also give us a bit of card selection as it switches between day and night. And then a four copies of the Weather Seed Treaty, which on chapter one can search for any basic land to put on the battlefield tapped, so that will set up maybe a turn four codex or survey. Then on chapter two makes a 1-1 token, useful for sacrificing it to various effects like maybe an Invoke Despair or Liliana's minus two ability. And then on the final chapter we'll give a creature plus X plus X and trample until end of turn where X is the number of basic client types. So that will be plus five plus five with a full domain, allowing us to deal quite a bit of damage with that Sapperling token. But this is also one of those read ahead sagas. So in the late game we can go straight to chapter three to get to plus five plus five and trample to maybe help close out the game. And then we've got some more cheap interaction with a full set of cut down and four copies of Leyline Binding, which we typically get to play for a single white mana in this deck as an enchantment with flash that will exile an opposing a non-land permanent until binding a leaves the battlefield. And then our author finisher is the Kami War, which is nice to have in a five color deck. We'll exile target a non-land permanent an opponent controls on the first chapter, then we'll bounce something and make the opponent discard and eventually transforms into the 6-6 six -six enchantment dragon and spirit that can also get stuff back from our graveyard if it gets a chance to attack, although I have yet to attack with this as opponents often have an answer at the ready. And then our mana base, as we mentioned, has a lot of these tri lands. Our base colors are black and green, since we need double black for drag, we need early black for cut down, and then green for our various ramp spells. And then white mana is the next most valuable, so we've got the full set of Rafine's Tower, full set of Proving Ground, and then two of each of the remaining tri lands, and then lots of basics, since we can also search them up with our migration and our treaty. So we've got four forest, four swamp, two plains, an island, and a mountain. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we've got a promising hand. Turn three treaty, hopefully turn four survey, and then a Kami war afterwards. Opponent on mono black is gonna hit us for two here. Hopefully their hands all removal. And yeah, we'll play another tap land so we can curve three into five. 
maybe cast herd migration once we get to it. Opponent levels up, hits us for three. Okay, maybe expect a shield herd next turn. For now, let us ramp. And then which color to get? Already have double black. Maybe an extra red or white. Now we will need to catch up here since we're pretty far behind on board. So finding our sweeper would help. Cut down. Does not quite deal with a 4 4 sleeper. So I guess we'll survey and then uh, the next turn we can Kami War. Get some of our tri lands. And then what do we keep on top? I think I'll put a basic forest on top, that way next turn we can potentially cast our Kami War and also discard our Migration to gain 3 if necessary, since we have plenty of action in hand already. Opponent attacks. I'll jump. Is it time for Shieldred? It is. Okay, so we can deal with a shieldred here and then cut down the 1-1 one -one sleeper and hope there's no backup shieldred otherwise we would be dead so I might be better off gaining three with herd migration actually bone moves to combats Level up, that's fine. If they level up again, then we'll cut down. And now they don't have the mana to level up once again. Okay, so we take four. Now we get to bounce Evolved Sleeper. And cast Herd Migration. Opponent would need a land for Meathook Massacre to be enough here. Alternatively, I can gain three first. So we can uh, still cast Migration afterwards. Although I might just want back-to-back -back Migration. Put an upkeep stop just in case, but probably won't need it if Shieldred shows up again. We can gain three to potentially survive. Trespasser will put us to two. And a sleeper. Okay, we'll take our draw step. Cut down, it's nice. So I can attack with a team. Cut down sleeper, play... Green Widow, and then hang on to Migration for life gain. That seems fine. Opponent jumps and trades. So now they might be counting on Shieldred to finish us off, and that's where the life gain is going to come in handy. Um, do I maybe just survey now? Instead of uh, Green Widow, sure. And then get some more tap lands. And keep a uh, binding on top. And if I put an upkeep stop, that can also answer Shieldred without me needing to gain life with migration. Invoke Despair instead. Alright, let's uh, gain three. We'll undo the top card here, but we'll keep us alive. And then I can sacrifice Kami War here as my creature. It's also an enchantment, so we fall to one, but we still have lethal in play with our four tokens. Awesome. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the play. Our hand is missing a ramp, but we can cast a pretty cheap Leyline Binding. Can always uh, discard Migration if needed. And another Binding, so we've got the full domain here on turn two. And we could play a Green Widow. Then next turn, potentially discard Migration, play a tap land, so I can play Codex on Curve. Sure. And if they kill it, we can get it back. Opponent with a Restoration. That we could exile with Binding if we want to. Before our opponent generates more value. And then next turn we can already play our Codex if we want. Without needing to discard Migration. Opponent with a Companion, that's fine. So they might be on an Invoke Justice type of deck. Playing the new 4-mana Saga. And sure, we'll just untap. Kami Wars, nice. And since we played land for a turn, I can wait on activating Codex. But it's probably not going to make a huge difference here. Right, depopulate kills our Green Widow, that's fine. Can still get it back for 3 mana, but maybe we can do something more powerful in the meantime. I like play another Codex. Oh yes. I guess we should keep up black mana for cutdown, or I might draw into another tap land, which is probably more relevant. Or I could have kept up white for binding. Alright. Don't think it's gonna make too much of a difference whether or not we can binding right now. Sanctuary Warden. I guess that one would have been nice to exile, but uh, can drag to the bottom now if I want instead, which is still a clean answer, or Kami War exiles it. Seems even better. And then I'm gonna draw now with Codex to try and hit our land drop. There we go. Once again, could have sequenced a little bit better to keep myself with a binding available. Alrighty. Bounce a token, put on discards. Discarding Titan of Industry might have a way to reanimate it too, and that can also go after our codex. But um, let's see here. I guess we start by drawing. Wouldn't be surprised to see a sweeper. But we can cast Migration, keep up binding. And then we can also go straight to chapter 3 for Treaty, just to get to plus 5, plus 5. And now we made sure to keep up cut down and binding. Opponent channels Crucible. Could see Invoke Justice. Put some counters on the tokens, in which case we'll maybe cut down in response. Yep. Take out a token. And then we'll be able to binding either Titan or the remaining token. So they can go after our Saga, or one of the books here. Gets rid of the Saga. Alrighty, so... Yeah, we could drag to the bottom to clean things up. Kind of a waste of a herd migration in that case. If I pump one of my tokens, it would get plus 5 and trample up to 8. 
That's not bad. And then we can Leyline Binding as well to clear Titan. We have options. Kami War plus Binding, another decent option as well. Yeah, let's try that. Draw first. Cut down doesn't kill anything on board. So... Kami War, Exile Titan, so it doesn't come back. And then Binding gets rid of a token. And then we should have 12 damage here. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And our hand's a little slow to get going, but cut down and then double codex to take over the late game. Wouldn't mind finding a bit of ramp. Opponents on Mardu, and there's our ramp card. Alright. So turn 3, Treaty. Turn 4, Codex. Can answer their 3 drop. Even if it's just a 1 1 token, I think. And then what do we want to get? Either Plains, Mountain, or Island. Get Plains, which is more useful alongside Leyline Binding. There's Fable. Okay. Could take care of the Shaman token. I think playing Codex is better. And then we should be able to take control of the game with double codex, drawing three cards per turn. Put on more of a mid-range deck. I'm probably okay trading for the 1-1, one -one, even though we miss out on a bit of damage. And a Jada, okay, so they might have some angels in there. And another announcements. So I wouldn't mind a sweeper here to reset the board, but for now we'll take our beating and draw with Codex. And Green Widow. So Cut Down doesn't deal with anything right now. We'll need to find an answer to Festivity first. Cannot quite cast Migration, so. Start by drawing, and then, yeah, Codex plus maybe another tap land, or we can play Green Widow as kind of a distraction and soak up a bit of damage with it. But we really want to find a sweeper eventually, so second Codex gives us the best chance, and maybe it's okay to keep up Cut Down, which can answer a 1-1 one -one token. Although, most likely, they're just going to draw with announcement anyway. So, let's draw now. And then play tap land. Okay, opponent gets to have their fun here. And next turn, hopefully, find a sweeper. If not, herd migration at least can give us a couple blockers. Although, it could be painful if... Announcement transforms, pumping their team, and then Meat Hook Massacre wipes out all our 3 threes while keeping the opponent's board intact. And they're just gonna play Massacre for zero to start draining us, so they probably have a backup in hand. Okay, start drawing. Kami War's not bad. So we can Kami War plus Cut Down. That's probably the play here. Get rid of Festivity. And then kill Reflection right now. Next turn, I'm not quite gonna have the mana to survey plus drag if we find it. Opponent could also be playing Invoke Despair for all we know. Just missing the black mana which they now have with the treasure. And that represents quite a bit of damage. 
They might be playing the 6-mana Angel 2 here. Nope, Archangel of Wrath instead. With a full kicker. So it can deal 4 damage to us. And yeah, now we're in trouble since Meat of Massacre is going to kill us if we wipe the board. But I guess that means we need to bounce Massacre. And then hope to find a drag. So, yeah, let's draw. Since, again, Survey does not leave the mana to cast our Sweeper. Okay, one more draw step. I could try to um, channel this to gain three, thin out the deck. Didn't think that's necessarily worth it. Yeah, we can still at least cycle Garden to get another redraw. There we go. So that clears the board, and then we can play Green Widow to maybe block a haste creature. And probably still fine playing a tapped land. Okay, so we're not dead on board, but uh, something like Invoke Despair would be lethal. Another Angel would do it too. Maybe there was a reason to hang on to Migration to gain 3. Companion for the redraw. And Edgar. Okay. There's another drag. So we're still in this. Could be time for survey and then draw into whatever we keep on top. A Leyline Binding, for instance, would be a clean answer to Edgar. And for now, I think we're still fine getting some tap lands out of the way. Kami War, probably the best option here. And then can draw into it. Draw again to see if there's a binding afterwards. There is. So we can get rid of Edgar. I'll do it now. And then keep two mana available to gain three at instant speed. And does Widow attack. Seems unnecessarily risky here. I'll just chill. Got another Kami War coming up. Don't think I've gotten to attack with this yet. Right, Liliana to make a sacrifice. Green Widow, presumably. Those who get in my way tend to regret it. Don't quite have the mana to bring it back from the graveyard. In case they had another edict effect. Uh, they're gonna Infernal Grasp. So yeah, that would be lethal if it weren't for the three life here. So we're still at three. And a Rite of Oblivion to get back Edgar. And Liliana's gone at least. And now we can exile Edgar with Kami War. Uh, let's see. So Kami War leaves me with uh, five, six mana potentially. So I could survey, find another binding, and draw into it with Codex. Or I can keep more mana available for Green Widow to come back, although it enters tapped, so I wouldn't be able to block necessarily. Yeah, let's just draw first and see what's up. Land. Okay, now I may be tempted by Survey. And then we can always drag if we don't find a Binding on top. And I'll grab a Basic to keep more Cycle Lands. Okay, so no Binding, but a Migration to gain 3. Keep that on top. But if I Kami War, I don't have the mana to necessarily cast it. So in that case, the safest play might be to drag, wipe the board, and then have migration available to gain life. If not, we can get back a spider. 
And then we can deal with the uh, coffin next turn. Opponent might go after our codex with right flashback. Another fable. And a massacre for zero. Yep. So we'll get back Green Widow. Draw with Codex. And there's Binding finally. Okay, so Kami War goes after Coffin. We can Binding Fable itself. Um, yeah, there's still a few issues at hand. Let me start by drawing. Another Migration helps. More life gain and a cut down. Cut down can deal with a 2 2 token. There's also an argument for going for the festivity here. I think Coffin is the biggest problem long term. And then. Possibly we want to get rid of Massacre. Could also now cast Migration and still have mana for a second one. Sure. And Green Widow might as well attack at this point, I suppose. And our opponent takes a trade. Okay. So we're at two. We would still be dead to another Angel with Double Kicker. Since Meduk Massacre and an attack from the 2-2 would be lethal. Probably wanted to attack before playing Herd Migration, in case they just plan to cast another Meatook Massacre here. And yeah, Token's attacking, so does point towards the Angel to finish us off. So that's either an Angel to kill us or another Massacre to wipe the board. Alright, just a Fable. And our opponent explodes. Wow, what a game. At one life, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hands a little slow to get going, but uh, we can ramp, clear the board, and be on our way. So let's play the Black Source first in case we need to cut down next turn. And then we'll get our green settled. And yeah, we can already play a pretty cheap Leyline Binding now. Just a single white. Let's keep on ramping. And get another black source, so we have double black. Opponent with the Celestis, which we could exile, although maybe we want to keep a target for Kami War. And for now, just play another tap land and pass. Opponent cuts down our token. Could be fine to cycle lounge since we already have the mana for Kami War. And the cruelty of Gix. Okay, can get rid of a creature or planeswalker on chapter one, so it doesn't actually hurt us. And then we'll drop a Kami War to get rid of it, as opposed to Celestus now. Still think we hang on to binding. And then next turn we can play another one. Invoke Despair, clean answer to Kami War. But I think we go for it again. As opposed to Survey. Let's see if they have another one. 
they don't. Opponent will have to discard. And we can survey. I'm getting some more tapped lands. Could also get basics to keep the cycling lands in the deck. Which is also reasonable, just get like forests and islands. And then Codex on top. And we can draw into it with Tower. Alright, point's gonna draw three. Pretty good. Really wanna resolve Codex, so I'm okay if they cast another Invoke Despair here, if that means them not having a counterspell available. Okay. Kami War transforms. And yeah, we'll see if Codex can stick the landing. It does. Opponent's got a Vortex to bounce Kami. And yeah, it only bounces creatures and not uh, artifacts. Right, Jingataxius does not counter enchantments, so Leyline Binding still a pretty clean solution here. Although could have also let it stay in play and just go for Kami War once again. Herd Migration, I'm sure they have a board wipe, but we'll make them use it. And there's a Meatook Massacre for three. Could get rid of the enchantment to deny the life gain. Don't think we care. The sweepers are not going to be doing much for us. Let's uh, Kami War again. Get rid of Massacre. Sure. And then we'll uh, cycle tower. If we were playing Meat Hook Massacre ourselves, a neat trick with Kami War is that you can bounce it with a second chapter to pick it back up so you can replay it. But uh, with a drag to the bottom, I don't think that's really necessary. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is very slow with no untapped lands. But we do have a drag to catch us back up and an early cutdown. So I think it's still a weird keep, hoping to find a basic along the way. Opponent blue-white. Well, if they're on control, this hand's not the best. Consider. Could also be more of a blue-white virtuoso style of deck. All right, well, let's uh, cast our treaty. Opponent might have a counterspell for it, they might let it slide. And we have blue mana from lounge and tower. We have double black. Don't think it matters. All right, reinforcements making a couple tokens end of turn. So it might be kind of a blue-white flash deck making some instant speeds creatures and then sitting back on counter spells so drag to the bottom could still be useful codex most likely gets countered and it is the type of card i would like to resolve so maybe we just have to be patient not play into their counter spell that makes a token and maybe let them overextend into drag to the bottom And pass a turn for now. Opponent considers again. 
because we can generate a lot of mana, so I'm probably just going to wait to play around some of their more conditional counter spells. Now I might want to cut down one of the tokens so they don't get to draw off a wedding announcement, but if they tap out for announcement we get to resolve codex, that's probably a good trade for us. Opponent's just gonna chill. Okay. Six damage might be worth getting in. Alright, opponent's got to Wandering Emperor, so now we get to resolve codex. That works for me. I hope you're ready to lose. My judgment is final. Could have kept up cut down. Probably fine to just play the tap land instead. And then double migration could be a nice way to stabilize. Still at 18, so we've got some life to work with. But our opponent's probably holding a couple counter spells now. So it's not going to be easy. Binding helps as another instant speed answer. They might have the counter spell unless you pay equal to the amount of creatures they control, which would make a token with kicker. So that's unless we pay three. So I could drag and have the mana to pay for it. Sure. And then still cut down and binding. And we want to drag before we're going to cast migration. All right, it's going to be an overcharge amalgam, which I can cut down and binding. And then the amalgam would just die to drag. Is that the best use of my resources? Yeah, that seems acceptable. And then we want to exile the token in case they have a way of bouncing my enchantment. Could also get rid of Wandering Emperor, but that's not going to work if we want to clear the board. Alright, so now Amalgam comes into play. It doesn't have anything to exploit but itself. So it's just going to trade for our sweeper. Alright, so now we've got a clear board, no immediate pressure, and a codex for card advantage. With two copies of herd migration to try and resolve. Still want to try and play around the more conditional counter spells if possible. This would um, probably work if we play an untapped lands, so I can pay for a make disappear or the one that makes a token. Could just be another amalgam, yep. Okay. Could also gain three with migration. We'll wait and see what happens next. We've got the edge in this fight. Consider. Yeah, I think I'll gain the life here. I don't see myself casting both migrations necessarily. Since we need to find answers as opposed to trying to race. Alright, binding works. So now migration. After playing untapped land, plays around the conditional counter spell. And then we could still binding. Alright, that resolves. Now the question is whether to binding the Amalgam or not. Fading Hope is fine. Is 
think I should again play around the more conditional counter spells and binding in my turn once I get to untap with all my mana, even though that means taking five. Remember your training. Now we have a way of pressuring the Wandering Emperor at least. And another Kami Wars, excellent. Okay. So, step one. Maybe bait out a counterspell with Leyline Binding. I'll send two tokens at Emperor, one face, one on defense in case of more 1 1s. works. And then binding to maybe bait out a response. And then Kami War could still come down. If not, maybe go for survey. All right, Soaring City to bounce their own amalgam. That's okay. And then now we could Kami War, even though we don't exile anything. We'd still get chapters 2 and 3 going, and we can pay for the conditional counter spells. Okay, and then probably okay to play a land tapped now, since I might want a lot of mana to play survey next turn and then cycle or draw with codex into whatever we keep on top and still potentially cast it. But now we're on the offensive here with our 3-3 beast tokens. So we've kind of flipped the game around, and our opponent explodes. Awesome. So yeah, we got to see our five-color domain ramp deck in action, and yeah, it seemed to play out quite smoothly. We've got kind of the late game covered against most of the mid-range decks in the format, even though cards like Invoke Despair can potentially still burn us out if the opponent is off to a particularly aggressive start, could potentially be mitigated by including more life gain sources in the deck, but have been happy with Herd Migration as kind of a split card to get a land, gain some life, or also be a win condition if needed. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.